Today's vlog is going to be a crash course in the language of love. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is going to be my second Canadian-themed vlog in one week. I don't know what's come over myself. For those of you who may be new to the channel or may not know, we in Quebec are not just under lockdown, we are now under curfew. From eight in the evening until five in the morning, we are not allowed out of our homes, so every evening or every other evening, I have been going outside with my dog. So totally legally talking about the most recent developments in the current Quebec lockdown and Hold on one second. All right, I am needed in the house. I shall be, oh my gosh, I'll be back in one second. This is now day eight, Viva on the street. Documenting in real time the Quebec lockdown and curfew that has been imposed on eight and a half million people in our province. Okay, I'm gonna put down, you are way too heavy. All right, sorry about that. I was needed in the house briefly. So the other night I put out a Viva on the street, day eight of curfew, where I was discussing some of the more counterintuitive measures that the government is imposing in order to deal with this second wave of the COVID pandemic. And in the comment section, someone brought to my attention an actual lawsuit that is currently being filed by a lawyer in Gatineau. And Gatineau, for those of you who don't know, is right on the border of Ontario. It borders with Ottawa. The lawyer is suing the government over these measures on the basis that they don't make any sense. I read the article in Le Soleil and I actually reached out to the lawyer and asked him if he could send me a copy of the lawsuit and he did. It is entirely in French and we are going to walk through it because it is short, it is beautiful and hopefully it will get something done although I have grown to be a little skeptical and cynical in my old age. Canada, province de Québec, district de Gatineau. Numéro 550-17-0119-219. That literally translates into Canada, province of Quebec, district of Gatineau. And if anybody is curious about that 14 digit number, the first three digits represent the district and the two of the last three digits represent the year. So you see 21 representing the year 2021. And the rest are just identifiers to give each court file its own unique number. William Desrochers, Demandeur contre procureur général du Québec, défendeur. Pourvoi en contrôle judiciaire, article 529.1, code de procédure civile. So William Desrochers is a lawyer in Gatineau, Quebec, who apparently has had enough of these draconian and arbitrary lockdown measures. The curfew in particular seems to be what put him over the edge, and he has filed suit against the Attorney General of Quebec. That is the individual that everyone has to sue when they want to sue the government of Quebec. Proceedings against the government of Quebec. Attorney General of Quebec. In general, proceedings against the Quebec government are brought against the Attorney General of Quebec. If you want to sue the Quebec government, you must refer to it in the proceedings as the, quote, Attorney General of Quebec, followed by the name of the government department or body concerned. For example, Attorney General of Quebec, Ministère de la Famille, Ministry of Family. Now, hopefully this won't be a procedural fatality in that William Desrochers has not referred to the specific ministry within the Quebec government, but he has filed suit against the Attorney General of Quebec, and the nature of the lawsuit is one in judicial review. And what does Article 529.1 as relates to judicial review say? Let's go read it, shall we? In English, because I don't want to translate that entire thing. Division 1 General Rules. 529. In a judicial review, the Superior Court may, depending on the subject matter, 1. Declare inapplicable, invalid, or inoperative a provision of an Act of the Parliament of Quebec or the Parliament of Canada, a regulation made under such a law, an order in council, a minister's order, or any other rule of law. And then at the end of the provision, it specifies that an Act for judicial review must be served within a reasonable time after the Act or the fact on which it is based. As you will see, this lawsuit is a little bit like myself. It is short and sweet. It is a mere four pages long. It doesn't make any extravagant or outlandish allegations. It only alleges that which it needs to allege in order to obtain the conclusion it seeks. Even though it is short, we're not going to go through the entire lawsuit because that would require me translating the entire lawsuit. I'm just going to pick and choose certain allegations, translate them for you, and give you the idea of what is going on in this lawsuit. Paragraph 1. Le 8 janvier 2021, le gouvernement du Québec a adopté le décret 2-2021 concernant l'ordonnance de mesures visant à protéger la santé de la population dans la situation de pandémie de la COVID-19. Translation on the 8th of January, the government in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic adopted certain decrees and the number of the decree was whatever that number was. Ce décret instaure notamment un couvre-feu pour tous les résidents du Québec dans les termes suivants. Il est interdit à toute personne entre 20 20h et 5h de se trouver hors de sa résidence ou de ce qui en tient lieu ou du terrain d'une telle résidence. Translation, this government decree says that no Quebecer can be outside of their residence or off their property as of 8 in the evening until 5 in the morning. Even more literally, it actually says that it is forbidden for anyone to be 
found outside of their residence between 8 in the evening and 5 in the morning, hors de sa résidence. It's the way it's written in French. It sounds a lot more harshly when it's translated literally, as opposed to giving you the essence of the decree. And the next allegation sets out the excessive penalties that can be imposed for anyone who dares defy this curfew. Toute contravention est passible d'une amende de 1000$ à 6000$. Translation, any violation of this decree is susceptible of a fine of anywhere between $1,000 and $6,000. The lawsuit then goes on to allege that the plaintiff has a specific interest to file the suit, hence the legal standing that we have discussed so much in the context of the US presidential elections. The plaintiff alleges that he is directly affected by the decree, thus he has the legal interest to file the suit against the government. Bien que le dit décret prévoit plusieurs exceptions au couvre-feu, le demandeur soutient que cette mesure porte atteinte indûment à son droit fondamental à la liberté. This allegation says that even though the decree has a number of exceptions, you can go to the pharmacy if you need to get medication. Thank you so much, government. This says that even though the decree has a number of exceptions, it nonetheless violates his fundamental right to liberty. The lawsuit then goes on to further allege that a number of the restrictions have no rational connection to the stated objective, which is to protect the population from the spread of COVID. En outre, le couvre-feu interdit plusieurs choses qui n'ont pas de lien rationnel avec la protection de la santé de la population dans la situation de la pandémie de la COVID-19, telle que la marche ou la course à pied par des personnes seules ou par des personnes qui vivent dans la même unité d'habitation, la circulation en automobile par des personnes seules ou par des personnes qui vivent dans la même unité d'habitation. This allegation says that the curfew that has been imposed through this decree in particular prohibits individuals from walking outside alone or walking outside with members of their household and from driving outside alone or driving with members of their household. According to the allegation, these restrictions have no rational connection to the stated objective of the decree. En effet, les activités subventionnées n'impliquent aucun contact physique avec des personnes vivant dans une autre unité d'habitation ni aucun toucher avec une surface ou un objet potentiellement contaminé et, par conséquent, elles ne comportent aucun risque de transmission de la COVID-19. Translation, the aforementioned activities of walking alone outside at night or walking with members of your household outside at night, it doesn't involve coming into contact with any potentially infected people. It doesn't involve touching any surfaces that might transmit the virus. So it has no rational basis with the prevention of the spread of the virus. And I don't need to have a PhD to know that that is fundamentally correct. Indeed, our own health director, Horacio Arruda, confirmed publicly that there is actually no hard evidence to support the effect of curfews and what that actually translates into is that there is no evidence to support the effectiveness of curfews to prevent the spread of the virus. In fact, our own government basically confirmed that it was more a punitive measure than a preventative one as in it was supposed to serve as a reminder, a stern reminder to all of us that the situation is still very serious. And I'm not even exaggerating, this is literally what they said the day they issued the curfew and explained how it would work. Moving on. Respirer l'air extérieur, circuler et jouir de l'espace public qui inclut notamment toutes les voies de circulation et les trottoirs à toute heure du jour et de la nuit fait partie des libertés fondamentaux de tout citoyen. Translation, breathing the air, going outside, benefiting from the public spaces, sidewalks, road is a fundamental right of every citizen. I love the way this lawsuit is drafted, short and sweet. Just like me. The lawsuit then goes on to allege that even in the context of a pandemic and the government's response to the pandemic, there have to be certain limits and there has to be a certain rational basis between the measures imposed and the objectives sought. Même dans un contexte d'une pandémie, même quand le gouvernement déclare un état d'urgence sanitaire, il se doit d'être soucieux des droits fondamentaux des citoyens et ne pas y porter atteinte plus que nécessaire. Even in the context of a pandemic, even in the context of a public health emergency, the government has to be careful not to violate the fundamental rights and liberties of the citizens more than they need to. And I don't think I'm going out on much of a limb when I say that when our government confirms that there is no concrete scientific evidence to show the effectiveness of the curfew, they are not violating our civil rights and liberties as little as possible. Toute atteinte aux droits fondamentaux, même dans un contexte d'une crise sanitaire, doit être raisonnable et doit pouvoir se justifier dans une société libre et démocratique. Any violation of our fundamental rights and liberties, even in the context of a pandemic, needs to be justified and justifiable. And then we get into the legal criteria of the atteinte minimale which is the minimum violation. Le demandeur soumet que le gouvernement du Québec n'a pas prévu suffisamment d'exceptions au couvre-feu, le mesure décrétée est donc trop large et draconienne. Le critère de l'atteinte minimale et la règle de la proportionnalité ne sont pas respectés en l'espèce. Translation, the decree and the curfew is too broad, does not provide enough exceptions, and is therefore totally draconian and unjustifiable. And to that end, the criteria of the minimum violation or proportionality of the measure has not been respected, and therefore the decree itself 
has to be declared unenforceable. The lawsuit then goes on to allege that the plaintiff, like the rest of Quebecers, are suffering irreparable harm as a result of this abusive curfew. Actually, the lawsuit didn't refer to the curfew as abusive in that paragraph, it just referred to it as a curfew I threw in that term, uh, you know, for effect. The plaintiff then alleges that liberty lost can never be regained, which is 100% correct, such that the intervention of the court is required. Il y a donc lieu pour cette cour d'intervenir afin d'accorder une réparation convenable et juste eu égard aux circonstances. It is therefore appropriate for the court to intervene and issue the appropriate relief under the circumstances. The plaintiff asks that this matter be heard on an urgent basis, given the fact that the curfew is currently in effect and will probably be renewed at the end of the one month, because why? When the curfew doesn't work, the government is just going to oppose another one. And if for whatever the reason there happens to be a reduction in the transmission of COVID, the government's going to say, good, the curfew works, let's impose it again. The wonderful magic of government when things don't work, the government doubles down, and when they do work, even if there's no causal connection between the measure that was imposed and the results obtained, double down again. The plaintiff asked to shorten any delays that might be imposed under the circumstances given the urgency of the situation. And then the plaintiff asked for certain case management orders which read as follows. Ordonnez les mesures de gestion suivantes. La partie défendresse produira un rapport détaillé et concis faisant état de tout le contexte d'adoption du couvre-feu, incluant des explications détaillées quant à l'objectif urgent et réel poursuivi. The plaintiff is asking the defendant, the Quebec government, to produce a report explaining exactly the thought process for implementing the curfew. The plaintiff wants any studies the government conducted or relied upon in imposing the curfew, specifically ones that showed that preventing people from walking outside at night alone would obtain a certain objective. Any facts alleged or reports produced by the government would automatically become evidence in the file with no need for other formalities or witness testimony in order to admit them as evidence. La partie défendresse produira un argumentaire écrit d'une longueur maximale de 15 pages. The defendant, the government, in support of its defense will produce an argument brief of no longer than 15 pages. I even like these conclusions. They too are short and sweet, but above all else, they are practical and to the point. Le demandeur pourra ensuite répliquer en produisant lui-même un argumentaire écrit de la même longueur. This says that the plaintiff could in turn and respond with his own argument brief of the same length. After all of this, the court could hear arguments virtually if needed before rendering judgment. All of this is what the plaintiff is asking the court to impose by way of procedure to get to the merits, and as relates to the judgment on the merits, the plaintiff is seeking the following order. Déclarer que le couvre-feu imposé par le décret 2-2021 concernant l'ordonnance des mesures visant à protéger la santé de la population dans la situation de pandémie de la COVID-19 est inapplicable aux activités suivantes. And here, another good strategic move in my humble opinion, the plaintiff is not asking for the sun and the moon. The plaintiff plaintiff is not asking to declare the entire decree void. He is only asking that the court declare it void as relates to the following activities. A. La marche ou la course à pied par des personnes seules ou par des personnes qui vivent dans la même unité d'habitation. La circulation en automobile par des personnes seules ou par des personnes qui vivent dans la même unité d'habitation. Toute autre activité ou occupation de l'espace public qui n'implique aucun contact physique avec des personnes vivant dans une autre unité d'habitation, ni aucun toucher avec une surface ou un objet potentiellement contaminé. Translation, all that the plaintiff is asking is that the decree, the curfew, does not include the activities of walking alone at night, walking alone at night with someone with whom you live, driving alone at night, or driving with someone with whom you live, or any other activity that does not involve coming into contact with other people or touching surfaces that can be potentially contaminated. It is not just a very limited request, it is a totally logical request, and it is the best way to start instead of asking for everything that you know a court would never grant. And that last sentence, le tout avec les frais de justice in Quebec, it is not the case that the losing party pays the legal fees of the winning party. Frais de justice are literally court costs. They are minimal, but the plaintiff wants the court to declare that the government has to pay the court costs. With our taxpayer dollars, but it's in there for a point. Now, this is an interesting lawsuit. I'm curious to see how it's going to go. I'm curious to see if we have any judges in our jurisdiction who are actually going to put their foot down and say enough is enough. The government has overstepped its bounds. I am curious to see if the government is going to try to find some procedural loophole, some technicality to have the lawsuit dismissed. I don't know. We'll see where it goes, I will certainly be doing a follow-up as they come. But that is the lawsuit. Someone has finally sued the government, even if it is only over the draconian and totally unjustified curfew that has been imposed on us and will probably be renewed as of February 9th. We'll see. I will continue doing my Viva on the streets with my dog at night, documenting the latest developments in this absurd situation. And something I forget to mention all too often, I actually have a second channel. It's called Viva Family and it is totally non-law related. The day before yesterday, I went snowshoeing with my wife to get some vitamin D. It's 
it's one of my most popular videos on that channel. Love or hate winter, there are certain days where it is just purely magical, specifically after a fresh snowfall when the city looks like a beautiful cupcake. So check out my second channel. I also have a similar second channel on Rumble. And if you like this video and you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. If you want to support the channel, all of these support links are in the pinned comment. We've got PayPal, Patreon, subscribe to our YouTube membership. Robert Barnes and I have a page on Locals, vivabarneslaw.locals.com. I am on Rumble, but more important than any of that, take care of yourselves, check in on friends and family, get outside, get some natural vitamin D, vitamin C, exercise, activity, and now you know your vlog. Peace out.